My name is Frank Clegg. As Cece said at the beginning, I've, I've spent my whole career in the technology industry. Um, so in my fifth, I'm in my fifth uh, decade. That just not only means I'm old, but I do have a lot of experience. And I've seen the tremendous benefits that technology can provide if it's implemented correctly. But I can also see the harm that if technology is not used effectively and properly, it can cause damage. In my opinion, the way that we're implementing and, and executing and deploying wireless technology today is not safe. So for that reason, I got involved with, uh, I actually was a co-founder five years ago of Canadians for Safe Technology. Our primary focus is on raising awareness and educating uh, parents, teachers, individuals, architects about the potential harm of wireless devices if they're not used in a safe manner. Uh, last year, I joined the Environmental Health Trust as a, as a, on their business advisory board for that same reason, to help advocacy uh, here in the U.S. market. And also uh, because Environmental Trust is very unique in that they also do advocacy and education and awareness, but they also uh, provide funding and are very involved with carrying on research in this very important area. Fortunately, in North America, we are very, very behind uh, some of the other countries that are leading in this issue. China, Russia, Italy, and Switzerland have guidelines that are 100 times safer than ours here in North America. In France, there's formal legislation has been passed requiring cell phone companies to uh, educate people on how to use cell phones uh, with speaker mode or, or earbuds uh, to, be, to protect them. They've been very, very aggressive with protecting children in schools when the lower level schools, they've banned, they've actually banned Wi-Fi. And you get into the intermediate, they're putting limitations on where the actual Wi-Fi routers can be in the school environment. Four years ago, it became illegal to market cell phone technology to children under seven years of age. Now, in North America, we eventually get there. It may take decades, but we do. Our concern is that there's a significant amount of individuals that are unnecessarily being harmed until our governments catch up and put more stricter regulation in. So, Things like asbestos, thalidomide, BPA, we do eventually get there, but as I say, in some cases, it may take two, three, four decades. Here in the U.S., the FCC um, issues the guidelines that industry has to follow. Uh, as Dr. Paul mentioned, these guidelines are, uh, have not been updated in the last 20 years, and they're relying on science that's 30 years, of age, 30 years old. There has not been a complete, thorough, systematic review in either Canada or the U.S. Uh, properly of the scientific evidence that absolutely shows harm to individuals uh, from wireless radiation. We're stuck in this old theory that if it he hit, tissue doesn't get heated, it doesn't harm. And we have categoric peer-reviewed published research, some of it funded by here, the NIH, that shows that there is harm to humans without heating tissue. Uh, this is my special concern now that I have two grandchildren is the focus on children. As Dr. Paul mentioned, uh, children's brains are, uh, absorb more, more water, so therefore they hold radiation longer, and their skulls are thinner. The research has gone back to, in, uh, to the 1980s that show there's a, uh, where there's a, the average cell phone radiation may penetrate an adult's brain about 10%. It actually penetrates 70% of a child's, uh, a child's uh, brain. So as it, you know, gets, it's, in, it's in the body and it also says that there's other peer-reviewed published evidence that show if you start using a cell phone under 20 years of age, there's a five-fold increase in your risk of getting brain cancer. We've done some work with a local school. I'm particularly also concerned that as we're, we're radiating these children the, from the time they're in the classroom until they go home at night unnecessarily. You can download the data, you can, you can work offline, but there's no curriculum, there's no discussion in the school environment about doing it in a more safer way. Uh, we did work at a local school in Oakville. We were able to reduce the radiation level by 90% simply by dialing down the routers and repositioning the routers in the classroom and in the school area, and the students still have 100% access to all the curricula that they need on the Internet. From a business standpoint, insurance companies, as you know, they live and die by their ability to identify risk and mitigate risk and, and reduce the risk to their, to their organizations. As you can see, Back in the 1990s, insurance, insurance companies were distancing themselves from the risk associated with wireless radiation. Two of the leading organizations, Lloyds of London and Swiss Re, have made very public statements talking about the potential risk, the unidentified potential risk from human harm that they are advising their clients to step away from insuring companies from this, uh, this potential harm. I am, uh, there's a, 
sorry. Um, and also from the business standpoint, Dr. Sheckley, who is a, a, a senior research fellow at the Institute, National Institute for Science, Law, and Public Policy, is also a professor at the University of Colorado, issued a paper earlier this year that really challenges the business philosophy and the business case around wireless devices. In his opinion, and, and it has been proven, that wire, wired solutions are uh, faster, they're more secure, they protect our privacy better, they're more reliable, and from a sustainability standpoint, the thing that he really challenges is, is this continual business model where the industry, my industry, has to continue to upgrade. Uh, that's the way they feed their revenue, but it's also because of the technologies they're doing. Whereas if you put in a fiber cable network, it is stationary. You don't have to change that uh, no matter what happens with the technology in the future. I am embarrassed and I'm, I am actually disappointed with the behavior of my industry. The CC outlined, legally we're protected. So we have all of these, every wireless device has some sort of warning, whether it's buried eight letter, layers as it is in the cell, in the iPhone, or it's at page 132 in the, uh, in the user manual. We are legally protected because we've told you that there is a risk that, that holding the device to your body, whether you put it in your pocket, whether you, whether you um, hold it to your head, or whether you actually stick it in your bra, that it will actually break FCC guidelines. Uh, uh, Canada's marketplace, which is a, uh, think of it as 60 Minutes for Canada, did a study and 80% of Canadians said they had never seen that warning and two thirds admitted that they held the cell phone to their body. And that, that warning goes for baby monitors, uh, tablets or any other electronic device. I believe that um, my industry has lost the trust that we have given to it. There's no doubt in my mind that the way this laissez-faire approach that we've had that says, look, let the technology roll out, people will find new apps, people will find new, new, uh, new, new designs, uh, new uses, has been very beneficial. But I submit we have no idea the true cost associated with letting this technology go unchecked and, un, and un, 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 unregulated or unmonitored. Um, it seems like every week or so there's a new announcement about somebody breaching and losing financial data, personal data, we're still finding out about the Facebook issue, issue where over 80 million people's information was compromised. Uh, some of us may recall, but most, oh, am I done? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop right now. Man, six minutes is fast. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, Yahoo got caught, uh, half a billion users had a security breach. They waited two years to tell the market and they ended up with a $35 million fine. I submit that in, in, in my industry where there's billions of dollars of profits involved, a $35 million fine will not change behavior. So in conclusion, I'm, I'm challenging my industry and encouraging my industry to really step up and do this self, to, to regulate and self-monitor and self-evaluate this technology. I think the days are gone where we throw the technology out there, as Dr. Paul not mentioned, 5G is the next one, and just hope that it's safe and hope that it doesn't hurt people. Thank you very much.